Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. It has been uh, an extremely long day and I'm not done yet, but uh, I'm going to attempt to address this um, Angel Reese, uh, Caitlin Clark thing that's going around. And the only reason that I'm even giving it any attention at all is because I see too many of my people uh, aggressively uh, attempting to check and put Angel Reese in her place. Now granted, a lot of people saw something on national television uh, that if you're not a real true sports fan, you won't understand. And so uh, that's one thing, uh, but let me tell you something, and you guys are going to have to forgive me some, for some reason, my camera has really been giving me the business today, uh, going in and out, it hasn't done that, uh, in a long time, it, uh, I don't know what it is, but, uh, I've got my ring light on and everything, and it's just, uh, deciding it's going to do whatever it's going to do. Okay, let's see if that works. But anyway, <laughs> oh man. But anyway, I don't know. It's sensing a light or something that's not showing up. So it's dimming. But anyway, uh, you guys can hear me. So that's going to have to do for now. Uh, look, um, the reason I'm here and even talking about this is because, again, I see my people uh going out, I, I really don't give a damn what they think about it or what they say about it they're in their feelings because their superstar uh finally ran into a wall it, it happens to everybody uh but i'm gonna talk about this based on the importance of really truly understanding why we do things um uh, so let, let, let's be clear. Um, at the end of the game of the women's championship game in the final four, uh, women's college basketball, um, the college player of the year, Caitlin Clark, who has been reigning terror on teams with two 41 back to back 41 point games and, uh, you know, she's the truth. She's not the truth because she's a white girl. She's the truth because she can straight out ball. Um, her range for a female is mad crazy. Her ability to get open shots was just seemingly her ability to get away from people that are obviously more athletic is crazy. Uh, it's obviously that's that's all she's done her entire life is practice and play. Um, and I'm not going to take anything away from that. The, the young lady can straight out ball. And throughout the tournament, she has been giving players and teams the business. She's been waving in the, the you can't see me. She told another player on the team, why don't you just shut up? All that crying ain't no, ain't no use for all that. Y'all 15 points down. She been in everybody's place. She's been talking mad smack. Nobody's had anything to say about it. And I don't have a problem with it. It's a sport. It's a sport where trash talking is legendary. The greatest players have trash talk. It is what it is. And all of a sudden, we have a situation where a little Miss Iowa finally runs into a buzzsaw where even her game can't rescue her team. This team from LSU was well coached. This team from LSU played with a mission. This team from LSU had people show up in, in ways that they hadn't shown up before. While Angel Reese has been this monster all year long, she has been a double-double machine. She set a collegiate record for double-doubles in a season. She is that person, and she has constantly heard throughout the course of the season how ghetto she is how um, uh, ratchet she is and, and all these things like that. And 
she's took it in stride. She's remained herself. Uh, you know, my thing is, I've got a type. I do. There's this idea that I have of a woman, but I'm a 55-year-old man. Just like with Meg the Stallion going out and throwing out the pitch at the Astros game and guys losing their mind. I get it. The young lady is absolutely gorgeous. I like her better without makeup, but I think she's an unbelievably beautiful woman. Not somebody that I would obviously date. She's way too young, and that's not where I'm at in my life. But I am not going to be got her now. Some of the music that I've seen, especially the stuff she did with Cardi B, definitely not down with that. That's just me. Again, I'm a 55-year-old man. But I'm not going to act like we didn't have little Kim and Foxy Brown come when I was in my, young, my, my 20s. I'm not going to act like that. Uh, what I'm going to say is there comes a time that there's a place for it. And there comes a time where we don't want that being the measure of our young girls' beauty, femininity, and who they are. I don't like the sexual objectification of our women, but I want to give our girls the freedom to be who they are, who they feel comfortable with being, without trying to fit into some white person's idea of what is. I'm so sick of the Eurocentric idea of what is. That's why you hardly ever see me dressed up. Why? Because the Eurocentric idea says that for me to be respected as an intellectual, for me to be respected uh, as a business person, there's a certain decorum and, and way of dress and presentation I have to present. No, I'm a beast at what I am, and I've proven it over and over again, dressed how I normally dress, walking into spaces and holding it down because I'm that dude. What I'm wearing is an addition and an enhancement when I want it to be, but what I have inside of my head, my mind, my experience, my heart is what carries me. I look at the purity and the love that that team had for themselves, the trust that their coach put into them. They just happened to be the best team on the floor that day. And Angel is that kind of person that she plays with a chip on her shoulder. She was hearing the trash talk. She also has seen what this girl has done. And my thing is, I'm not carrying a chip against her. My whole thing is, it doesn't seem like she was bothered. She, she like she shook it off. You know, like she this isn't the first time she's had a run in. The the, the, the young girl at Texas grabbed her by the hand on doing the handshakes after the game and called her out on some stuff she was saying on the floor. She just pushed her hand off, kept going. And when they asked about it, she said, I want to get into that. We just won the game. We're going on the next thing. She plays and she understands if I'm gonna give it I'm going to end up having to take it. I haven't seen her complaining about it, but everybody else is complaining. I expect some of them to do it. Not all of them, because I've heard a lot of them say, hey, man, that's part of the game. We just happen to get it on national television. They just happen to be in her face. Cause she now, what she did do, that was a little over the top and probably should have been teched, honestly, uh, was following her around doing it. That's, you know, that is, um, God. Um, it's a common common term taunting that's a taunting call that's a technical foul she should have been teched uh, at the end of the game when she was doing it she wasn't uh, the refs realized even that hey it's in the moment of the game the game is over the game is decided no need of murking it up so they let it go the girl didn't respond to it she probably knew it was coming hey I've been dishing it out for the last three or four games this game I got it and it is what it is. So that's that part of it. Here's my problem. I can't stand when we try to marshal our people into a place of respectability uh, based off of what white people are going to see or judge. Uh, beautiful young girl unbelievably talented just a sophomore uh so much room to grow and hopefully she'll mature and she'll be a little bit more tactful but i don't want her to lose that edge because there's a world out there that wants to eat her up chew her up and spit her out and it's not on the basketball court and so she needs fire she needs fight she needs to know who she is on and off the court she doesn't need to be shaken to feel like she's got to get in her place when certain people are watching or certain people are moving around so my thing is i'm excited about that 
uh, I'm excited about her standing her ground and doing what she did. So I just had to get in here and weigh on that. We got to be real careful. Now that, that 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 that's a place to do that. I'm not saying that we just let people go off and do anything, and we don't teach them that there's a time and place for everything. But that's sports. Sports is not church. Sports is not the business office. Sports is sports. There's a level of <clears throat> That you've got to really get at and understand. So I really and truly like the fact that she cares. That I like the fact that Caitlyn is feeling herself. And like I said, I'm not taking any away thing from her. I'm not trying to marginalize what she did. She had an unbelievable season. She had a remarkable tournament. I watched her game because, again, you know, I'm used to players getting hyped. And then just, you know... Not being, she got, she has a game that looks like it's going to translate to the next level. And if she stays healthy, she's looking like she's going to have a look, good long career because the skill set just simply says, I can show up. Um, and the thing is, she's still developing skill wise and she hasn't matured completely skill wise and she's still learning the game. So there's a lot of upside to that. I do think that a lot of the game is going to catch up with her because there's a lot of kids out there that are watching and are going to be coming out um, and looking. But I still think she's got a great game. I'm not going to take that from it. And I'm not. And what I am going to say is she's not the one complaining. Uh, I think uh, there was a white sportcaster that said it real good. I can't think of his name. Les, something Leslie or Leslie, something like that, Leslie. But he stood up and said it best. Caitlin Clark is a grown-ass woman. You know, she's a young woman, but she's grown. She, 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 if she doesn't know, she definitely knows now. You throw it out there, better be ready to catch it when it comes back. But my thing is, if we want to call our young women on something, let's do it, you know, in private. Let's not go out there and act like she did something so horrible. And then when somebody points out the fact, well, she did the same thing. Well, she didn't do it like that. I mean, we just literally are going to find a way to tear this girl down. The bottom line is she did something to somebody that somebody else had been doing. Now, the fact she followed her around and she got in her face and it looked like she might have called her one of them names. Uh, and I can't verify that because I couldn't hear, but it looked like that might have came out of her mouth. But. All that stuff, hey, it's in the heat of the game. It's in, you know, I, I played my ass off just so I could come at you. You know, and, and, and I'm telling you as a former athlete, that's, the, that's that person when you're looking at. And if you get a chance, you're going to give them the business because you can't stand them. And it's okay. I see it in every sport. There's just certain people you look at and they just get under your skin. And so sometimes they're going to have the upper hand. Sometimes you're going to have the upper hand. That's how it goes. Uh, uh, Reggie Miller was like that for Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant and they both whooped his butt but it didn't stop him that's who he was Larry Bird was a trash talker I mean Jordan probably the chief, chief trash talker but the thing is how we handle ours Especially when it's tied into them. You know, there's a time and place, and I get it. Certain things we are supposed to do, certain things you're not supposed to do. There's a time and place for everything. I get all that. But that's that's something I'm not I'm not I'm not handling I'm not rough handling my people in front of them. That's one of them, hey, shoot them up, hit them up in the in inbox. Hey La Mama, you probably went a little too hard, but good game. In the open, I'm like, back the fuck up offer. We, 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 you know, and another thing is we demand ours to act in a way that they're, they're not demanding theirs. And I'm not saying we're supposed to stoop in a level. I'm supposed to say, understand where it's coming from. It's coming off a of court, sports. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. But I had to drop that. I had to leave that. So I hope that, you know, uh, you can take it and do what you want to with it. Uh, by the way. If you believe in the work we're doing at the Odyssey Project, I try to talk cock bull crap with uh, basketball players and sports and celebrities and stuff, but the real stuff that I do on a daily basis, show some love and support and go to the description box, click the link or give by the organizations, by way of organizations, cash app account. We need your support. On that note, I'm out of here. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. They said I 
Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.